Hello everyone! Today I will show you how you can create and animate 3D shapes in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Today we will do a little practice in Fusion and I will show you how you can turn a 2D picture, text or logo into a 3D shape. <laughs> then we will be animating it. And I will also show you how you can easily duplicate your shapes in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Maybe it sounds complicated, but I really tried to keep everything fairly simple. And I'm sure that even if you are a beginner, you will be able to follow the tutorial. Let's start! I am in the editing tab, and to start with our composition, we will have to get a Fusion composition. So I will go here to the effects library and I will search for the fusion composition. I will drop it onto my timeline and as a default it's 5 seconds long, which is fine for me. You can always stretch it or shrink it if you want. And to open it in fusion, we just have to right click and then we have to choose open in fusion page. So we are in fusion and here we have our output node ready and now if you want to change a 2D shape into a 3D shape we'll obviously need a 2D shape ready and today I will use the shape created in the Photoshop and I've already imported it into my media pool so I will go to the media pool and I will just drag it from here I will place it in the left viewer by clicking on this dot on the left and this is how it looks. It's a star with no background, but you can also use text instead or your logo if you have one. And now we'll need a few more nodes. So first we'll hit shift space and we'll grab image plane 3D and then shift space again and we'll grab a duplicate 3D node and then shift space again and we'll get a renderer 3D node to be able to view our 3D composition. Okay, let's place the image plane in the right viewer. And now, what basically image plane 3D node does is that it creates a plane in the 3D space, as you can see here. And we can replace this plane with any other shape. And how to do it? It's very simple. We just have to connect our shape with the image plane node. And voila. Now we've got our star in the 3D space. So let's connect all of the nodes with the output node to be able to see the final composition. And let's place it in the right viewer. Now I will click on my duplicate node and here in the inspector I will show you how it works. So if for example we have two copies, we can move the copy left and right. We can also increase the number of copies, so now we will have three stars. But let's undo it. And I will show you the trick. I will show you how to use the duplicate node to turn your flat image into 3D. So first, we will need a very high number of copies. I tried what works best for me before. And it's 800 copies. So I will change it here to 800. And then we also have to change Z offset here to spread our copies a bit. Not too much. Let's just do 0 0.0001 and to be able to see the result we'll have to add another node after the duplicate node. So I will click on it, then I will hit shift space again and I will search for transform 3D node. Then I will click on my renderer node and I will change the renderer type from software renderer to OpenGL renderer. And this way the composition will be rendering faster. So let's go back to our transform 3D node and here when we for example move the Y axis we can see the result. So now the shape is 3D. So by increasing the number of copies and by spreading them away from each other we have created the illusion of having a 3D object. So now we'll create a little animation. So I will click on my transform 3D node I will undo all changes here and then we will start from animating the scale. 
So I'll move my cursor to the very end of the clip. Then I'll set the first keyframe next to the scale and I'll make the star a bit smaller. So I'll go down to 0 0.8. Then I will also set another keyframe next to the Y axis in the rotation tab. And I'll rotate the star a bit like this. And then I'll change my Z axis as well. I will change it to 20 like this. And then I'll move the cursor to the very beginning of the clip and I'll change my Y rotation to minus 360. And then I'll change my Z axis as well. I'll change it to minus 120 and then scale as well to zero. And let's see the result. Okay, looks nice, but let's change the X rotation as well. So again, I'll go to the end frame of my cursor. I will set up a keyframe next to the X axis and I'll go to the very beginning of the clip and I will change it to minus 50, for example. And let's have a look. Okay, I like it. So now to make it look more interesting, we'll add a color shift to the star. So I will move the media in node like this and then I will hit shift space and I will search for the color corrector. I will tidy my nodes. And now we can, for example, play with the hue slider to change the colors of the star like this. We can also use the color wheel. So just have fun with it. But I will undo all changes with Command Z and I'll create a simple color animation using the hue slider. So I'll move my cursor to the end of the clip. Then I will set a keyframe next to the hue and I will move the slider to the end. And then I will move the cursor to the very beginning of the clip and I will move the hue slider to the left. And let's watch it. Now you can see how the colors are changing and I like it a lot. And now we can also make the whole animation a bit smoother. So I'll click on the Transform 3D node. Then I'll go to the spline over here. Then I'll choose the values I want to change. Then I'll highlight my keyframes and I will hit S on the keyboard in order to make the animation smoother. And let's see. Okay, looking good. I can close my spline and now we'll add some background. So I will move my nodes around. I'll make some space after my renderer node and I will add a merge node. And now from the toolbar, I can just grab the background node and connect it with the merge node. And now our star disappeared. And this is because the background is on the foreground. The green arrow indicates the foreground and the yellow arrow indicates the background. So to change it, we have to right click on the merge node and click swap inputs. And let's click on the background. So here in the inspector, we can change colors. We can also replace our background node with any clip or picture if you want something more sophisticated but I will leave it black for today. And lastly, I will show you how we can duplicate our shape. So I'll make some space after my transform 3D node. I will click on it. I will hit shift space and I will search for a duplicate 3D node again. Then in the inspector, I will increase the number of copies to five. And when I move X offset slider, you can see that our copies are all here. We can spread them out. But what I want to do is I want to create a circle from my shape. So first, I will increase my Z rotation a bit. I will go to 140, for example. Then I will go to my Transform 3D node. 
and here I will increase the X translation like this. Okay. And let's also change the Y and Z translation. There's no right or wrong here, so play around with that until you are satisfied with the result. And let's play it. Okay, looks good, but I'll make the gaps between the stars more even. So I think I have to go back to my duplicate 3D node and I have to change the Z rotation to 145. And now let's see the final result full screen. Thanks so much for watching my tutorials, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, please subscribe and leave a comment below. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me. See you soon.